Well, hello and welcome to Gymnasium Total Nerdery Channel. You're watching From the Depth, and this is the first episode of my building a battleship. Gymnasium. So, we're going to build a battleship, and this will be a little mini series. And you might be wondering why am I going to build another battleship all of a sudden? Well, because. The broadsword is not made to be the best ship ever, it's made to kind of look cool. And I want to build a ship that I'm actually trying to be properly good. <laughs> so, um, let's look at a little tweet I made recently. So, basically after the party I was uh, sitting there uh, with my computer and finishing um, my whiskey sour. And I thought, I got this great idea. I thought like, hmm. Why don't we challenge someone on a battleship battle? And I thought, um, who can I even challenge? And I thought, hmm, let's challenge Borderwise. So I wrote this uh, overly long tweet um, asking to challenge his battleship builds because I saw that he made uh, during some weeks like uh, a battleship. He, he has a little series where he calls Battleship Diaries, where he, where he tests out different. Um, stuff and for his battleship and I've seen some of those uh, episodes so I thought that uh, that's pretty cool so that's why I knew he's building a big battleship so I basically asked if uh, I could uh, you know challenge it and he did accept so um, we're going to make a battleship roughly the same size and we don't know exactly how big that battleship will be yet uh, so we have to be a little bit flexible and we need to be able to change the cost of the battleship uh, up and down dependent on you know how the end product will be from his side and uh, when we're done and he's done we're gonna send this battleship over to him or publish it on the workshop so we can try it out uh, against his battleship and maybe he will also put his battleship on the uh, Steam Workshop so that I can try out his battleship uh, here as well. Um, and for this little battleship, um, within the rules set up here, it will be a little bit more strictly, but I will most likely also accept uh, um, subscribers to send in their battleships to try against this one. Um, just to add some interesting little variety uh, to it. And it will be a little bit more strict than the broadside battles because um, for that one I don't really care, but for this battleship I want it to be no cheese. Um, yeah. So anyways, what have I even done? I, 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 I have actually started on this battleship and I even found a name for it. It will be called the Draconia. And I just built a little outline, it's goddamn huge. Um, because of course, um, I don't know if he wants to uh, ghost my battleship or not, but I thought that if I'm gonna challenge his battleship before it's done, it has to be fair that my battleship and its weaknesses and its progress is also out for public view because otherwise I can just counter the battleship and uh, it won't be fair. <laughs> so, I will use my normal building style. Um, I'm gonna rely heavily on wood as always and I think that this kind of wood will be great also as a little layer to take some initial damage and we can probably have, you know, some other layers on top of it. I'm, I'm thinking that this little sandwich pattern would close in this little area here and it would uh, basically let us have some small systems underwater there and basically have other stuff on top and since we have this 4 meter distance we can limit kind of explosive ranges uh, in case um, we are facing enemy huge torpedoes or something like that. So starting out you can see I've spread out materials and um, these things, water pumps like this all over the place. We have a keel that's kind of big uh, just because when I developed my missiles that are basically shredding the hull from beneath, 
Having a Kegel like these could possibly deter some of the shots, so I thought it could be a good idea and some extra stability too. We'll see how we'll do. Um, anyways, on top of here we have a AI core and other core as well. And I'm I actually I usually don't do this, but we are actually having a kind of local ammo storage here and here as a front and back of the turrets. Uh, no, the, the AI, I mean. And while it is always not the best idea to do like this, I feel that the wall between the AI and these, it's so thick that if I detonate this, it doesn't damage the AI. So this ammo storage actually works more like a protection layer, <laughs> if you so say. In any case, um, I rarely do this so properly, but I have understood from people telling me repeatedly times that I need to be better at EMP insulation. And I have finally tried to do that. So this is now one box of metal that has one layer of uh, rubber within it and a few EMP surge protectors uh, in, at that layer, so it should really not pass through it. And inside of that we have a big box of heavy armor with stone linings on the inside. So it's really, I, I really try to overdo it here. And if we just remove this little bit here, you can see that if I remove my sand, which we have material storage just in here. So that's, we have some basic materials on the sides here and they also work like armor. Uh, for my, from the, my, uh, from the depth uh, steampunk tournament, which you might have seen. And if you haven't seen it, you need to look at it right now. In any case, we had really limited uh, armor capabilities. And uh, turns out that um, Adnicreas, he used these huge containers. <laughs> To have, I think it was around the AI uh, to help a little bit with the armor because they are, these are big boys. You can see they have 8,000 health and they're pretty big. So if this takes a hit, it will probably protect us. So, anyways, I thought that was a cool idea. Uh, while Adnicreus has a, had a really good idea there, he didn't, uh, you know, his ship got wrecked anyway. So it's not like it's there is no tips in from the depth that are going to like absolutely save you. But anyways, you can see we have a kind of limited AI compartment here. It will be two by two, a uh, two high, and then we'll have uh, stone on top, and then we'll have heavy armor, rubber, and metal. <clears throat> and uh, over that, I'll probably add some uh, <clears throat> um, metal wedges, stone wedges, or just a plick. But I feel this is a good little start for building this thing. And if you have seen my missile development tutorials, um, we're going to add a missile on top of it. We're going to add a missile system. I haven't made a prefab for it yet. But it turns out in my latest missile tutorial video, I kind of thought that you could spoof the carrying capability of the cluster missiles to have more uh, missiles than you actually can bring. But it was that different missiles took different, um, like new re newly reloaded missiles from the rack, and I kind of uh, misinterpreted that as the earlier missiles actually got the uh, missiles again, so it could actually carry more than it could, <clears throat> as long as it is uh, as long as uh, it was reloading. However. This was never true. I just tricked myself and uh, I learned how to... I learned by my mistakes and I understood why it all didn't work out. And I now <clears throat> made this a good... I made this into a good thing. So by my mistakes, I understood that uh, we can use this same missile blocks. This is 64 medium missiles or medium torpedoes, to be honest. And one of these missiles carries 64. And I've set them up um, because here you can see, here we have delays. Um, these are like delays here. Let me actually go like this. So this is missile staggered atom fire and they will go up to five seconds. 
And I didn't actually realize this, but you can stack these. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can actually stack them. Um, which means that we can make them have a really big re uh, delay. Uh, one of these missiles take one minute to load and by having these five times six we actually get 30 seconds so basically uh, it has 30 second delay and these uh, reload at 20 seconds which means that we can fire these torpedoes twice on each of this missile and we don't need to have double setup so here i have the proper way to use uh, cluster missiles and that's by cost saving uh, by having only one of these gantry platforms and I didn't feel like making a proper big uh, missile video testing <clears throat> uh, episode for just this little realization so here you have it in the first episode of my um, yeah battleship building series so what has changed? I basically made the warhead arming delay. I basically made them activate a little faster just so that uh, an enemy battleship, in this case, uh, <laughs> in this case, border wise, this canoe, um, can't escape us. Uh, so they're activate quicker. And it's a little, it's a small chance that we actually miss the target, but we'll probably hit the target, yeah. And uh, the changes are reflected in these. I removed the high explosive and only have EMP so that the explosives don't uh, make each missile kind of pop away there. So I'm going to spawn in a crossbones so that you can kind of see what's going on there. So here you can see it has a big delay too before the... Uh... Oh no, no, oh no, I'm controlling the missile. <laughs> this is kind of stupid. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. AI. Thank you. Anyways. Where do we have it? There we have it. So here you can see they're dropping down. Now they activated and they tear up the hull from beneath. But, um, big hole. Um, and I seen kind of Borderwise's uh, design for his uh, armor. And I don't know if it's just me, but I'm almost feeling like, damn, that's that's a lot of armor. Is it excessive? I don't know. All of that ERA and metal sandwiching is pretty heavy. Um, and yeah, I might uh, it might change too. I haven't watched all of the battleship diaries, but I watched some of them, and um, it's building a really powerful ship with really thick armor. And I do know for a fact that he is good at EMP protection because I believe he's used the rubber coating for ages. Um, but anyways, um, even though I do know that he is a more skilled and experienced builder than me, I do hope that I somehow can make this uh, make a battleship that actually beats it. We'll see. And here we can see um, my, sh my my missiles went through, so they went for another round here because they went through the ship. So that's the power of them. But it's kind of interesting, and they, they one of these come every 30 seconds, and it's very possible that his anti-air defenses will shoot this huge missile down. I don't know, but um, you know we gotta try. And I'm also going to have some cram spamming. Um, um, God, I don't remember. Was it? Was it? Was it maybe Fate Ori at Necrius or someone else? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. One of you told me that Borderwise really likes crams, and I like cram too. So I'll be spam him, uh, him, his ship with some crams too. And I guess that he will have kind of strong anti-cram and missile defenses, but. Uh, Due to his very strong armor, um, I think that it's smart of me to do spam some of those heavy shells in there just so that uh, we can deal some damage. Because uh, <clears throat> um, I already built a... Uh, and there you can see, it's taken out. I think they're pretty uh, nice. They activate much faster now. So uh, I think it's cool. <clears throat> and 
Anyways, um, what was I saying? I think in any case that um, we'll need to spam his defenses there and hopefully get, we get through. I am going to have my APS main gun that I wanted the battleship to use it for. Um, and now I will have a battleship to use it for and it's a railgun with three barrels and I think it's pretty cool. So anyways, um, this missile system, as is, I think it's set up pretty well actually, I'm, I'm happy with it now. Um, this I intend to install somewhere on this ship uh, as well, so that we can have some big missiles firing. In any case, <clears throat> that is the first setup and beginning of my um, battleship building series. So I hope you will stay on me for this thing. And one thing that I can tell you already, you can see I have a kind of hole here and you might think that's a little bit interesting. And it is. Inside of this little shaft or area, I will actually have a propeller. So the main engine propeller will be inside of here. And that will let me make the main propeller be a lot more protected. One thing that I also thought could be a like, real cool idea, that was to have uh, <clears throat> propellers inside of uh, these like wooden areas. So I'm thinking that we might make a little uh, output thing going on there and we'll have some propulsion going on in here. At least sideways propulsion. Like if we do like this, <clears throat> we don't need to go like overkill, but I believe that we want to have a stone wall for this. We'll replace it with a stone wall. And I'm going to have water. We're going to have huge propellers. And you probably understand where I'm going with this. I'm going to have huge propellers here and there just to add to some turning. Now I desperately need the uh, symmetry plane, but well, something like this. I think that's I think that's pretty neat. And they're kind of far away too, so they kind of get oh no, I just realized uh, this area is now flooded. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna compartmentalize it off. Oh, and do you know what's pretty funny? Which I definitely learned from... Uh, uh, was it Snivelord, I think? Who filled this balloon with this thing. We can have these. Ta-da! And they look like they're leaking, but they actually provide a full wall. So we can have a wall like that and it's now compared to Montelais, so this area floats and this area provides propulsion. Stupid, but fun. Yeah, anyways, <clears throat> of course we want to set up uh, all kinds of stuff like roll and stuff like that inside of compartments like these. And these compartments will also add a lot of health uh, they will make it so that even though many of these are damages, damaged, damaged, they still provide floating power with these air pockets. Why are you complaining? Aha, uh -huh. these leak through water. Yes, they do. Okay. Good to know. Anyhow, I believe that is this little update thing. Um, I am going to show you. I am going to show you what, what I'm. What am I trying to say? I am going to show you my battleship turret that I intend to use for this thing. And maybe we can even just just mock spawn it in here. Of course, it won't be like proper. Ah, uh, 
I don't know if we're gonna have a layer of wood on top of that or if we're gonna go with alloy already. It depends how many layers we want. One of these costs four and an alloy thing costs 20, so you kind of, it's a big difference. And it doesn't hurt to have one layer of, uh, one layer of uh, wood like that. I wonder if I even will use stone or if it's gonna just add to the weight. I'm thinking that this shouldn't be hit with EMP very much anyways, so I think we're gonna opt more for alloy on this thing. Alloy, wood and metal. And not so much stone, because it will add to unnecessary slowness and slugginess. Anyways, um, considering that... I think we are going to... Uh, oh, you know what? You know what I also think? These big pockets here. This this thing, like, it's... It's... It's too big. We need to set up some symmetry planes. I think we're actually gonna compartmentalize this off a little bit just to get a decent pocket going on there look <laughs> this is a physical wall it's so stupid all right great maybe i can add one here too <clears throat> because i imagine these side ones will like definitely get shredded instantly Okay, that was, that was the biggest pocket, right? And I'm thinking that everything will be a little bit asymmetrical when it comes to important blocks. Just for the simple reason that we want them to... Uh, we want them to be kind of replaceable. Like that. Alright. Alright, so basically I added this little platform here. I added some extra propellers here for turning in the front and right here we're going to spawn the battleship which I talked about a little bit and I think we're gonna spawn some temporary engines too because we need power to even fuel the railguns and stuff so let's just uh, let's just be simple and spawn a few of these and make them battery rechargers thank you and we should, of course, have batteries too. Where, where do we have batteries? Resources. Batteries. Right. Maybe that's enough. I don't know. I don't remember. So, uh, now we, of course, would have it on a little bit more stable platform than this thing. But this is the turret I intended. We're gonna check around for my different, like, sub-objects and stuff. Because I have a lot of choices. And I can't even remember what they're all called. This is another railgun. We're not supposed to use the arbalest. Um, let's see here. It's not that one. It's not this one. This, <laughs> this could be a proper battleship turret though. It's insane. Uh, but I feel like... Even for this build, I think this might be a little bit too expensive. It's 178,000. Uh, and to be honest, maybe my main turret is too big too. I don't know. Oh, and this thing. This is this was my main turret for the Ymir battleship. It's, it's a little weak. But it is in the same style um, as... Is it? Oh, let's see here. It's not the hexaburst. I, like, I'm sorry, what, what even is it called? This is the main gun on the broadsider, uh, the broadsword, by the way. This thing. It's kind of, it's kind of meaty. Anyways. Is it this thing? No. Is it this thing? No, it's not. God damn it, why do I have so many turrets? 
This thing is even more insane. This is 300,000 materials. This will definitely probably not be on a um, battleship ever. It's, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, it's too chunky. It's an easy target. It's like a, it's like a good Amiga anti-air gun. Anyways, um, is it? There we have it. Three five hundred main gun T five R A A P. So this is a kind of compact uh, turret. We can have several of these as kind of main guns, and it costs whatever does it cost? It cost eighty. 3000 so it's not like cheap but it's not like super expensive either i tried to go for some sloped armor there it has a kind of narrow neck maybe it's a tiny bit dangerous to use this thing i don't know but uh, if i remember correctly it's it's pretty good here we go inside of it we can do like this here we can see we have some charging going on there. And on this shaft we actually basically have... Uh, it's just a support thing, structure. That has an AI and some surge protectors and... Um, the shell. And then the turret actually goes on top of here. So we have the loaders inside of it. And I wonder... I'm not actually sure that it uses the same shell, but it seems to do. I thought it didn't use that. Never mind. Maybe we can cycle through this thing a little bit. Here we have it. So here we can see it's a kind of compact design. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's good. It's a good turret to have several of. It's not like over enormous or anything like that. So if we're just gonna get over there. Yeah, right. We need to get here too. There we are. And we can we can barely can see the shots. Where where am I even? Yeah, but uh, we can turn it and point it, and uh, as you can see, it's not the fastest thing in the world. Oh no, our engines can't keep up with charging these batteries though. We probably should set them up too, so that they kind of. Uh, Shoot with a little delay or something. Yeah, we're 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 so dragged down by the recharge thing. Anyways, let's see what it's supposed to be. It's like five RPM, and if we go to the railgun, it's charging time. 11 seconds. That's probably because of our load like speed, right? We need fuel tanks, that's an issue. So if we add a couple of... Whoops. Fuel tanks like this. Good. Now we can add a few more engines. Just for the time of being. Like that. No. Battery. Thank you. Charge my batteries. Yes, charge batteries. It's definitely clear we need a dedicated battery charger. Right. So if we go here now. It's still 11 seconds. Did something change? Or did I just set up this badly? That's not good. All right. Fire rate. I'll need to tweak this definitely. Oh no. What am I saying? God damn it. Sorry. 
RPM and shots per second are completely different things. Uh, it's perfectly matched up. Never mind, nothing's changed. I'm just confused. Yeah. So here we have the proper, like, uh, fire rate. It's slow. And we could probably divide up these uh, railgun shots so that they don't shoot at the same time. Um, but I think that if someone is using like anti uh, munitions and lamps and something like that, it would be hard to take out all three of them coming at the same time. While it would be much easier to take them out if they come in like, uh, you know, one second delay or something like that. So it's by it's it's a design by a reason too. Anyways, um, I almost thought that that thing would be a little bit bigger. Um, so let's let's just look. This cram is of course insane. It's a proper doom cram, and I would want to stick this cram on this ship. But I feel like that's absolutely stupid because this is like 700,000 and if I add this, I don't think we'll be, you know, we won't be able to have many other systems. And what you actually need to do when building a like good ship is spreading out the damage kind of good. Now the shatter is too expensive. Um, let's see here. I don't know if we'll have sieves that is actually from a like anti uh, whatever is it called. I'm not sure if we want to have uh, sieves cannons, closing a weapon system cannons, because they are just not so good. Um, I th I'm thinking right now that maybe we'll have some lamps and see if we can counter some incoming uh, shots from railguns and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm not sure we'll make it powerful enough to actually be able to counter it. Maybe we can just make it take out some cram shells. Yeah, well, let's put the pepper we can probably have. I don't want to use the pankakus again. Um, it's also 100,000 materials. The meat head is a good, reliable 13,000 cannon like this and I would imagine can you imagine like having these along the sides of this ship something like this could be kind of cool and since I made so many turrets I feel that I really I really want to you know use them I really want to actually get to use them all some ways and this is the hexa burst it's also kind of nice so let's see here. The pepper is 12,000. It's kind of cheap. The hexaburst is twice the cost. And I think the hexaburst is not what we want for uh, this battle because it's only good against light targets. It's like an anti air burst gun. We will, however, have. Oh, these cute mini crams. These will definitely have. This is the gun point. This is a super small cram system that just we can just fit in there. It's like almost a deck gun. It can add to the spam. And then of course my favorite, even more kind of deck gun. This is the Golem. It's kind of sturdy. I really like the look of it. It's one of the main features from my Emir first battleship. And here we also have, let's see here, here we have the double trouble. So the double trouble is, uh, oh no, that's an anti argon if I remember correctly. That's probably nothing we'll have. We're just looking through these turrets here and see what we can use. Here we have the boomer anti -air. Um It can be a decent uh, additional system because it's cheap. And if we just fill the area with some bullets, um, it can be a good idea. And we, we might take out some detection systems with this thing. Uh, but it comes... Oh no, right, it doesn't have a shell on it. I'm lazy. I usually like to have uh, 
I like to simplify things. No ammo controllers. Well. And maybe we should just spawn in this thing a little bit because I want to know if my Theatris on this old turret is actually good or not. Because as you can see it definitely fits the design of this thing with a pointy like main turret. Um, yeah. And then we have... The Bang Bang is probably nothing we'll have for this. But maybe. Maybe we can add it on there. But I feel my skills are probably developed since I built this, so I'm not sure if I want to use it. I'm gonna see if it's good. That, that's one thing you only know after the fact, and that's if your uh, turrets are good or not. Starting to be a little bit heavy on that side now. That turret is really heavy. Here we'll have uh, these beautiful things. anti airs and no anti air. Now that's anti um, anti munition system. We'll have a couple of those, as well as a couple of these. These are anti torpedo torpedoes. We'll be using those as well. And this this is one of my favorite cram cannons. It's like a cram anti air cannon. I think I want to stick one of these on top of there just because I like to have them in the aft of the ship. All right. And then we of course have the Arbalest Cram. No, uh, Arbalest Railgun. Why am I saying things incorrectly all the time? Who knows? All right, very nice. Now we, we're totally like flipping. That's really bad. I wonder if we can quick fix this thing. Yeah, so as you might kind of imagine, um, is this enough? It kind of is. Two propellers like that. That's good. We can balance it out. Awesome. I just want to show you these turrets that I've spawned in here. And maybe you can tell me in the comments which one of these uh, you think we should add on the uh, battleship. So let us begin with... Uh, let's begin with this like railgun. Do you think I'll add a railgun? I'm saying absolutely yes. But uh, you can give another opinion if you don't think it's actually a good turret. Right, then we'll continue from this area here. This is the Golem. It's a classical turret. <clears throat> it has a slow reload time. It shoots every one minute. Uh, I might update the setup of this thing. It's a little bit old and probably weak. The good thing with it is that it's pretty sturdy, you know? Yeah, all right. So next, moving on. This is, of course, a small cram turret. I def and I definitely think we'll have on here uh, because this reloads every nine seconds. Uh, it has a thousand diameter. It doesn't have any packers. We might add one, but other than that, it's just the solid. Uh, it's just a solid. Oh, we do actually have some of those. Yeah, it's actually a nice little setup here. I don't even know if it have a fuse. I think it doesn't. If I, oh, or is it here? There we have it, fusing box. It has penetration depth, three meters. And that missile system over there, whoops, will of course be uh, something that will spawn in. But this is a cute, nice, small turret, very good. All right, and then I have this thing. I kind of like the design of this turret. It's probably not good in any way. It's too much free space. And I made this little sandwich pattern so not the entire turret gets blown up, even though it doesn't have interior armoring. Um, but as you can see, it has a reload time of 11 seconds. It's kind of a middle ground turret like that. Um, I think it also has, probably has like pen depth or something. 
can be a nice turret to have on the sides of the ship. Not like front, but like side turrets. It looks like those casemates, but it's a proper cram. Alright. And then we get the next one. This this big thing. We probably not want to have that. Alright. Here we can see. This thing. It has a super short turret. <laughs> They're super short uh, barrel. Um, you need to look at this thing. It's too expensive anyways. But you can see. It's basically some solid metal inside of here. Um... It's a shaggy boy. Whoa. Wrong button. <clears throat> and it uses... The funny thing with this is that it uses... If you can see here. We need to just remove. Come on. Oh. Oh, it's just so slow. Come on. Alright. There we go. Thank you. Very nice. It has only two meter shells like that. So that's why it's a little bit weird. Um, and we have an interesting tea trees going on here for sure. It's some kind of weird type of sandwich tea trees. I don't really know. All right, no. Nope. And like that. Okay, we're back. So if we're gonna steer this little thing here, um, if I can get close to it, you can see this is a really fast firing turret. And it's... Um, it fires kind of short shells, it's a hasher, um, and due to Borderwise's armor setup, this is absolutely the wrong type of turret for that target. It's just, it just spams hash, and it does a pretty good job at it, but um, not for this application. Not for this application. So that turret is like automatically disqualified by myself, but uh, you can suggest me using it anyways, of course. Now, I'm a little bit interested in what type of Tetris I go for this one. <clears throat> and it is the... Yeah, it is the... Kind of four pillar Tetris setup. So you can see we have a pillar there. With connections and one there. And one there. And... It's pretty, it's pretty well set up actually, especially when you consider that these four go to four different barrels with a weird kind of setup. And this thing is uh, set up to uh, detonate on time from launch, so basically close to the enemy. And if you want to see, it goes like this. Ta-da! Now it only shot one. Come on. It's waiting for a synced weapon. Alright, uh, the syncing for these weapons are just catastrophically set up, so uh, we would need to fix that before I can even showcase you anything. Good to know. This is my trusty anti-missile system anti-missile missiles will just spawn a bunch of them and they'll do their job very nice all right moving on to some more interesting turrets i believe this one i wanted to use for a long time it has a shell somewhere on top of there down there to be honest and it's a... Uh, why? It's set up as a hollow point, but that can be quickly changed. And it's a railgun. So it shoots a fast shell. Like that. Very fast. 
and it shoots them kind of often ish we know and they go so fast you kind of miss that they actually fly away so that's pretty interesting all right and then we have this thing I'm really interesting to see um, how we set up this tea trees so um, this because this is a really old turret and I see I have some metal beams inside of here too um, it was in the days when cram stuff could explode a little bit and I don't think it's super good but it's also not a catastrophe and it's a dual barrel setup Twenty nine seconds reload. <clears throat> to be honest, we can actually use this probably. I can just armor it up a little better. Um, I'll just. I can probably just redo the. Nah, actually scrap this one. I'll make a similar turret that's better. If you don't really want to have it, of course. Now we can have it. Maybe. Right, this thing doesn't work. No ammunition. Moving on. And here we have. Okay, this is this is the hexaburst. It's really cool, but wrong wrong target. It's a railgun. It shoots really fast shells, but uh, it doesn't do it doesn't do the satisfactory damage. Or maybe it does. Actually, let's turn off repairs. Here we can see. Of course, at a close distance like this, it actually deals good damage. But you can see these are like metal blocks too. Ugh. But hexaburst. That's a, that's a turret I'm actually proud of. It's just so satisfying to hear this thing. Rip. But uh, it will just peel off the top layers of armor. It's probably not the right way to go for a size like this. Especially not when we're facing a big target. And if you're wondering what shell we're using for this thing, it is a Sabot Armor Piercer. Anyways, here we have this one, um, which I didn't remember the name of. And it's basically a fast firing turret. Let's see here. And this is this this uh, this is just set up to shoot normal shells to be honest. It's nothing more than that. And as you can see, it's also kind of a, a peeler. It just peels away materials a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm also thinking this is probably not the right way to go. It just peels away the enemy slowly, and the only thing we can use it for is to peel away like uh, detection, and then of course. Uh, anti-aircraft it's probably what I developed it for so nah probably not worth the materials even though it's kind of cheap and this thing I remember is definitely a oh no can I reach it I can I think this is an anti-aircraft gun it has one armor piercing and one sub Synchronization. And this one then. Oh, it's set up to sync. Okay, I just looked at the wrong one. There we go. Much better. Now we deal double that damage. So I'm feeling like this one is somehow a little bit satisfactory it has two barrels 
maybe it's something we should use to slowly peel away. Yeah, something like that. But you know what? Um, tell me in the comments which of these turrets you think can be decent and what turrets is just, you know, maybe it's the case that Jim and me have to decide you have to design all turrets in you because none of them work. Uh, if you think like that, um, tell me that too, because then I need to know. In any case, um, God damn it, it's kind of sturdy, you can see. Not sure this is the one. In any case, um, what is happening here? I think I think it's time to remove this thing. Thank you. It's also time to remove these. Beautiful. Here we have them. All the turrets. And of course, this missile system goes on top of it too. I'm wondering though. 349,000 materials. That's kind of good though. These turrets are expensive, some of them, so um, then we know we can have probably many more. In any case, um, let's not drag this out anymore. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I'll be waiting in comments and I'll see you next time. It will be very fun to uh, see if we can successfully defeat Borderwise. And he's a good builder, so expect me to lose. But uh, it's always fun, the process of building and, uh, well, seeing the results. In any case, see you in future videos. This is your host, Jim Desmond, or signing out.